Welcome back to this series on neural network programming with PyTorch. In this video, we will write our first code of part two of the series. We'll demonstrate a very simple extract, transform, and load pipeline using Torch Vision, PyTorch's computer vision package for machine learning. Without further ado, let's get started. There are four general steps that we'll be following as we move through this project. First, we'll prepare the data. Second, we'll build the model. Third, we'll train the model. And then fourth, we'll analyze the model's results. In this video, we'll kick things off by preparing the data. To prepare our data, we'll be following what is loosely known as an ETL process. Extract, transform, and load. We extract data from a data source, we transform the data into its desirable format, and then we load the data into a suitable structure for querying and analysis. This ETL process can be thought of as a fractal process, and this is because it can be applied on various scales. The process can be applied on a small scale, like a single program, for example, or on a large scale, all the way up to the enterprise level where there are huge systems handling each of the individual parts. If you wanna know more about the general data science pipeline, check out the data science video where we cover this in greater detail. Once we've completed the ETL process, we're ready to begin building and training our deep learning model. PyTorch has some built-in packages and classes that make the ETL process pretty easy on our end. I'm here in a notebook now, and let's just start with our imports. Torch is the top level PyTorch package and tensor library. Torch Vision is a package that provides access to popular data sets, model architectures, and image transformations for computer vision. Torch Vision is PyTorch's package for this, but it does come as a separate install. Lastly, we have torchvision.transforms, which is an interface that gives us access to common transformations for image processing. And this is coming from within inside the Torch Vision package. We're ready now to prepare our data. Our ultimate goal when preparing our data is to follow this specific ETL process. First, we want to extract, which means get the fashion MNIST image data from the source. Then we want to transform. And this means to transform the image data into a PyTorch tensor. Lastly, we want to load, which means to put our data into an object that makes it easily accessible. For these purposes, PyTorch provides us with two classes, dataset and data loader. The dataset class is an abstract class for representing a dataset, and a data loader wraps a dataset and provides access to the underlying data. An abstract class is a Python class that has methods which are required to be implemented. So to create a custom dataset using PyTorch, all we do is extend the dataset class by creating a subclass that implements these required methods. Upon doing this, our new subclass can then be passed to a PyTorch data loader object constructor, thereby wrapping the dataset and giving us additional functionality. We will be using the Fashion MNIST dataset class that comes built in with Torch Vision. So we won't have to do this for our project. Just know though that the Fashion MNIST built-in class is doing this behind the scenes. I mentioned methods that are required to be implemented. Specifically, there are two methods that are required to be implemented. The first one is the length method, which returns the length of the dataset. And the second one is the get item method that gets an element from the dataset at a specific index location within the dataset. So let's look at Torch Vision now. The Torch Vision package gives us access to the following resources. We have datasets, models, transforms, and utilities. The top two are the more important ones. So the datasets are like the MNIST dataset or the Fashion MNIST dataset. And the models are like VGG16 or any of those types of models that you may have come across before. So if we wanna access these with PyTorch, we're gonna use the Torch Vision package. All of these resources inside of Torch Vision are related to deep learning computer vision tasks. So let's see now how we can take advantage of Torch Vision. 
When we learned about the Fashion MNIST dataset, the archive paper that introduced the Fashion dataset wanted it to be a drop-in for the original MNIST dataset. The idea was to make it so that frameworks like PyTorch could add Fashion MNIST by just changing the URL for retrieving the data for the MNIST dataset. This is indeed the case for PyTorch. The PyTorch Fashion MNIST dataset simply extends the MNIST dataset and overrides the URLs. Let's check the TorchVision source code to see this. This is the Fashion MNIST dataset implementation. We can see at the top that the Fashion MNIST class extends the MNIST class. In the last video, when we discussed the importance of data in deep learning, we found that the intent of the Fashion MNIST dataset was to be a drop-in replacement for the MNIST dataset. The paper indicated that the only required change would be to swap out the URLs, and that is indeed what we see here. The only actual difference specified in this class definition for the Fashion MNIST dataset is the URLs where the data is fetched. Otherwise, the class definition for the Fashion MNIST dataset is the same as the MNIST dataset. All right, so let me tell you the challenge for this video. The challenge for this one is to use the PyTorch TorchVision source code to figure out number one, which class the MNIST dataset extends, and number two, where the MNIST class fetches its data. Specifically, find the domain name where the data is being fetched. As a bonus, see if you can figure out the significance of the name in the domain name as it pertains to CNNs. Hit the comments with your answers. All right, let's put the Torch Vision package to use. Our task here is to get a data set and then wrap it with a data loader. To get an instance of the Fashion MNIST data set using Torch Vision, we create one like this. Check it out. This gives us our Fashion MNIST dataset instance. Let's talk about the arguments we passed to the constructor. The first one was the root, and this is the location on disk where the data is located. More on that in just a second. Next is a train parameter. We passed true for this one. This tells us we want the data to be for the training set. Remember, the Fashion MNIST dataset is split with 60,000 images in the training data and 10,000 images in the testing data. Next, we passed true for the download parameter. This tells the class to download the data if it's not present at the location we specified for root. Finally, we have a transform parameter. And here, we passed a composition of transformations that should be performed on the dataset elements. Since we want our images to be transformed into tensors, we use the built-in to tensor transformation. And since we want this data set to be used for training, we name the instance train set accordingly. When we run this code for the first time, the Fashion MNIST data set will be downloaded locally using the URLs we saw in the class definition. Subsequent calls check for the data first before downloading, so there will be no double downloads or anything like that. Let's check out the data loader now. We just passed train set as an argument here. This wraps the data set up inside the data loader object instance. And now we can leverage the loader for tasks that would otherwise be pretty complicated to implement by hand. For example, we have batch size, thread management, and shuffle capabilities as a couple of notable ones. From an ETL perspective, we have achieved the extract and the transform using torch vision. For the extract, the raw data was extracted from the web using the URLs that we saw in the class definition. For the transform, the raw image data was transformed into a tensor using the to tensor transformation object. And for the load, the training set was wrapped or loaded into the data loader, giving us access to the underlying data in our desired format. 
the data loader gives us access to the data and gives us querying capabilities. So we can shuffle and have a batch size that will give us the different types of querying capabilities that we need during the training process. We'll want to be able to change our batch size and we'll also want to be able to shuffle. And those two are examples of querying capabilities. Now we should have a good understanding of the Torch Vision module that is provided with PyTorch and how we can use data sets and data loaders in PyTorch to streamline ETL tasks. In the next video, we'll see how we can work with data sets and data loaders to access and view individual samples as well as batches of samples. Until then, check out the blog for this video on deeplizard.com and give the Deep Lizard hive mind a look where you can get Deep Lizard perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you in the next one. I'm Jeff Dean. I'm a Google Senior Fellow at Google. That means a couple of things. First, means I'm kind of old. Second, it means that I get to spend my time working on problems that I think are the most important for the company. I lead the Google Brain Team, our artificial intelligence research team based in Mountain View, California. Our team does long-term research on how to make machines intelligent. AI is gonna be more impactful than the invention of the personal computer and the spread of mobile phones into your pocket. So the idea of artificial intelligence is not new. It's been around since the very earliest days of computing. It's a grand project to build machines that are intelligent. And there's many ways of pursuing this. It's captivated computer scientists ever since. The most promising approach, though, is the area of machine learning. Rather than trying to embody machines with everything they need to know up front, rather, we want to enable them to learn, to learn how to learn, so that they can uh, learn from their observations of the world and to make inferences based on those observations. The field of deep learning is a particular kind of machine learning that I'll be talking about. And it's been uh, shown in the last four or five years to be remarkably effective for a wide variety of problems. So in machine learning, we're going to expose a system to examples of the behavior we want it to have. And those examples are going to teach it. It's going to learn from those examples how to do something. Deep learning, in particular, has a particular way of doing this that is really important. So it builds these layers of abstraction automatically as part of the learning process, where the lowest level things are things like, you know, does this part of the image contain a little splotch of brown? And then as you go up through the layers, the, layer, the kinds of things that it learns get more complicated. Things like, is there an ear at this part of the picture? Or something that looks like a couple of eyes, or maybe some whiskers. And those features emerge automatically as part of the learning process, which is a really critical uh, aspect of deep learning. We don't have to tell it how to tell a cat from a dog. It just learns that there's these things called whiskers, and they seem to appear in lots of photos, and they seem to appear more often than ones about cats.